Hey guys, it's Diggory, and today I'm going to be talking to you about Call of Duty Infinite Warfare Zombies. Now, about two days ago, Call of Duty released a 24 minute stream where they basically talked about all the features in Infinite Warfare Zombies, and it, I just wanted to break it all down and put it into a video for you. Okay, so the interview was led by Jay Farrow, who plays Andre, and he was interviewing Brian Bright, who's the project director, and Lee Ross, who is, who is the associate project director. Okay, so now I'm going to play a clip about them talking about how the story starts and what we can expect from what I'm assuming is the intro cutscene. Well, the story is we have four aspiring actors who right. show up for an audition uh, for a really eccentric but very well-known director in Hollywood. He's been around for 40 plus years making some really terrifying, horrible, visceral scenes in movies. So when these actors show up, they think it's there for an audition, right. but it turns out he wants to get a little bit more out of them. So as they sit down in this old movie theater to audition, he says, you know what, let me roll one of my old films for you and kind of get you into character. But he meant quite literally. Suddenly a vortex opens in the screen and they're ripped right from their seats into the silver screen. Before they know it, they're in the 1980s. Their clothing has changed, their hair has changed, and they've taken on the persona of the archetypes that our players are going to get to play as. Okay, so as you saw there, what we can assume is the intro cutscene is based in modern day with four actors going to audition but then being sucked into a zombie apocalypse which is in a theme park called Spaceland. He then goes on to say how these four actors then are put into the archetypes of basically 1980 and here you have a rapper, a valley girl, a nerd and a jock and they're all made to survive in a zombie apocalypse together. Okay so the rapper is played by Jay Farrow, the valley girl is played by Sergio Zamata, the nerd is played by Seth Green and the jock is played by Ike Barinholtz. So David Hasselhoff is also in the park with you and he's a DJ in the park. Now, during the interview, they said that he will happily give you a helping hand. And to me, this links in with some of the Easter eggs and probably the big Easter egg that they have going on. So finally, they talk about Willard Wyler and the fact that he's played by Paul Rubens. They don't say anything else. They don't say if he's more than just a director, if he's actually in the game when you're in space land or anything like that they just say who he's played by now to me this links to easter eggs and that the reason why they're not saying is because they want us to figure out these easter eggs and they want us to figure out what will of wyler's bigger role is other than the, you know the director of the movie okay so now i'm going to talk about gameplay traps specifically and they talked about traps throughout the whole thing, so I've just taken all the things about traps, put them together, so that you can watch them talk about it now. Within this space, we have park attractions that have been transformed into weaponry for the players. But in the theme park, we have really cool attractions. So we have a roller coaster you can get on. So you can actually ride the roller coaster and shoot I, targets. I did that. I did the roller coaster. It, it's, it's hitting the targets are hard. I got a couple of them clowns, though. Yep. We have the chromosphere, which is like a gravitron, creates a black hole above it when it starts spinning, where you can train a, like 20 something zombies up into that same black hole. We've got rockets. You can test fire the rockets and, and get a line of zombies to go into the flames. <coughs> you know, there's a escape velocity, which is like a, a rocket ride that spins. And so you can get, get in there and the zombies get hit by that and they'll fly hundreds of yards away. There's lots of cool, you know, park attractions that you can use. There's even bumper cars. You can run the zombies through the bumper cars and they'll bumper get smashed. Cars. Right, so at the end there, there was that awesome disco trap, which just looked insane with all the lasers coming out everywhere. And all the traps just look like they fit into the map so well, which is just really, really nice to see. And to me, it shows that they've put a lot of time and effort into making this map looking and going to be playing really, really nice. So that's the traps that they've talked about during this. So now I'm actually going to move on to the weapons. Now, there are tons and tons of weapons, and I thought, well, maybe they themselves should describe what kind of weapons we're going to be seeing. So, what about the weapons? Let's talk about those. The weapons are, um, you know, we're bringing in the uh, <coughs> kind of the, the ability for you to modify your guns that right. you find on the wall. So, in zombies, you find guns on the wall, they cost money, you buy them, you can use them. But now you can modify the gun, you can add up to six attachments to them mm -hmm. uh, in the front end before you go in. And so when you get to the gun on the wall, you'll have the gun personalized the way that you've set it up in the front end. But the cool right. thing is you can, um, you can also up, you know, um, the weapon leveling yeah, from yeah. multiplayer and zombies is shared. 
what we can do is you can bounce back and forth between modes, however you want to play. You like to play with the shotgun, boom, 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 multiplayer. You come into zombies, your shotgun's leveled up. You can add more cool attachments and powers and abilities and stuff to your guns. And we got some other cool guns. We got this, this forge freeze gun where you can freeze the zombies. Yeah, that's the, I like that one. Yeah, and that one's great. Yeah. You can freeze them and then you can have the slappy tappy taffy perk and just go up and punch them. Or if you're the valley girl, gag them with a spoon and yeah. they'll shatter into pieces. Yeah. Um, well, we got some cool to toys as well to play with. Like there's a transponder. You can throw it down on the ground and then run around the map. And then if you ever get in trouble, push the button and you'll teleport back to where that you threw it on the ground. Right. So there's some, some cool other like toys that you can play with as well that you can buy. We call them weapons from the future, but you can buy them from the ticket stands throughout Spaceland Park. So aside from the things that you can bring back and forth from multiplayer to zombies, mm -hmm. we also have some zombie specialties. And a couple of them you'll see in our trailer, which are super awesome weapons. <coughs> One of them is called the Face Melter. And when you shoot a zombie Ooh. with it, they literally turn into a firework and they blast off into the air and explode into a massive cool explosion. So there was just so much information in that last few clips. They talk about wonder weapons, they talk about a new perk, they talk about a spoon, which is like a melee weapon. They talk about a transponder, they talk about zombie specific weapons like the face melter. They have a new perk. This all just sounds so amazing, so I'm going to go over it in a bit more detail. So let's start with the weapon leveling. They said that if you level up in multiplayer, you get it all in zombies. It's shared, which is awesome. What I want to know is if you level up in zombies, will it carry over to multiplayer? Is it or is it just one way? I would have thought it's two ways. Otherwise, it wouldn't make too much sense. But either way, the leveling is just awesome. So now I'm going to go talk about the new wonder weapons that they mentioned. They mentioned two, the Forge Freeze Gun which looked like a death machine sort of carried gun, which fires out a beam of ice. And this just looked awesome. It looked so much better than what Treyarch gave us, which was the Winter's Howl. That gun was good, but the Forge Freeze gun just looks 10 times better. Next, they mentioned the Face Melter. This turns a zombie into a firework. How cool is that? In the trailer, you'll see the zombie's legs shoot off and he has, his body goes up into the air and explodes. So also in the trailer, we see like this orange beam gun when they're sitting on top of the stairs that is just like mowing zombies down and it looks absolutely sick. We also see the pun of a boom box, which is basically a speaker, which is a bomb, hence the boom box. Um, now this is basically a take on monkey bombs, uh, that's what I'm getting from it, but it, it just looks so cool. So now I'm going to move on to melee weapons. Now, when they talked about the new perk, which will come after, they talked about if you're the valley girl, you can have a spoon. You can gag them with a spoon. Now, to me, this sounds like a melee weapon, which is obviously a spoon. However, this isn't the only melee weapon we're going to be getting. In the trailer, you had the nerd running around with an axe, and you also had Andre the Rapper with some knuckle dusters. Now, in addition to that, you also had the valet girl again, not with a spoon, but with like her hands out in front of her and a green light coming off, pushing all the zombies back. Now I don't know what this is, but there's definitely a lot of new melee weapons added into zombies as well as all the new guns. They also mention a new perk called the Slappy Tappy perk. And they say that you can just go up to a zombie and punch him, or if you're a valley girl, go and gag him with a spoon. That's all we really get from the perk, so it'll be interesting to know what the spoon thing means, but I'm guessing it's just a perk where you can go up, punch a zombie, and they're down, which is really cool. They also mentioned buying guns from ticket stalls, not off the wall, which makes me think that you actually have to go to a specific stall around the theme park to buy a gun, instead of just going up to a wall and buying a chalk drawing. So this sounds a lot like there's actual vendors around, which would be very interesting and it'll be a lot different to wall guns. Maybe we'll see some wall guns as well, I don't know, but it does sound like they're getting rid of the wall guns and going into like stool vendors just for like one gun. Later on in the video, they also mention about the magic wheel, which is basically the random box. Yes, they've brought the random box back, but it just looks like a, a big speaker and you have like a I don't know, like a little pointer going around and all the guns changing in front of you. So that's obviously their take on the mystery box. They also mention lost and found, bleed out, guns back, play a small fee to get your guns back. Now this just sounds so helpful. When you bleed out in multiplayer, you then don't have to start again. If you have enough money, you can go to the starting area, 
pay your money and get all your guns back. I don't think you get your perks back. They didn't mention that. They just mentioned getting your guns back. If you get your perks back as well, that's even better. Although that does seem just maybe a bit too overpowered or for lack of a better word. So confirm the pack punch is definitely in the game. They don't tell you where, they don't give you any hints to how to get there, which makes me think that it's a, a few steps process that we have to figure out. Otherwise, they might just say, oh, it's just in the map somewhere. But the way they talk about it makes me think that you need to get some steps to do it. But they have definitely confirmed that a pack punch is definitely in the game. So now I'm going to play you a clip of them talking about fortune cards. Now, to me, these sound a lot like gobble gums. However, there are some differences between them and to be honest to me they sound better than gobble gums so i'm just going to play you the clip so that you guys can decide what you think yeah that's your fate and fortune cards meter okay and so as you spend money in the game or as you um earn money in right. the game the meter starts filling and when it fills all the way up then you can fire off one of your fate and fortune cards and fate cards they're they're both fate cards are, are permanent you unlock them through uh, progression in zombies right. fortune cards are consumable you get them through loot you can use them um, for one game you can use them up to three times in a game right and so they're 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 just they're buffs they're short-term buffs for the player uh, they make you more powerful some of them will give you a really cool gun for maybe 30 seconds or a minute some of them will um, like one of them gives you money every time you get hit by a zombie for instance or one of them if I stand next to Lee we we're, we're stronger together so what's cool is you can actually stack them so you know, you can have more than one active at a time. Right. And, you know, you could have Phoenix up running. You could have the black hole gun out. You know, you could have multiple of these, these uh, Fate and Fortune cards up at any one time. And then, you, you know, when you run out of your five that you brought into the map, you can go up to one of the fortune tellers in Spaceland, pay a small fee, and he'll refill your, your hand. Mm. And you can do that three times in a game. So you could actually, you know, use up to... 15 cards in, in one game. So in that little clip they talked about fortune cards which sounds like gobble gums but different. That's the same but different. Now the way that it's the same is that it's like these little sort of I don't know what to call it uh, power-ups if you will that help you out during the game. However unlike with gobble gums where you take five in there's the only five you can have and then you have to go to a machine to buy them. You can have them unlimited times fortune cards you have five again however once you've used all your fortune cards up you then have to go to a vendor to buy them so you actually start with your fortune cards you don't have to immediately go to machine to buy them that's how they made it sound I don't know if that will be it but that's how they made it sound and that just sounds really cool and the fact that you can only do this three times means that you have to think about when you're going to use your fortune cards uh, how you're going to use them as you can't just keep going and going and reclaiming them So I think this adds a different spin on the way that you're going to think about playing zombies Now they also mentioned the black hole gun now to me this sounds like It's part of it's like a death machine Maybe like it's a really really powerful gun like death machines just one hit kill at any round What if the black hole gun is like the death machine? except it's just like sucking all the zombies in or something. Anyway, either way, it just sounds really cool and it sounds like a sort of death machine type gun that you can get from a fortune card. In that clip, they also mention about stacking cards. This means that you can use, I think, maybe probably up to five cards at the same time. With gobble gums, you could only use one at a time and when you get another one, you replace it. Fortune cards, it sounds like you can use all five at the same time. Um, which is, just sounds really cool. So many more possibilities now available because of the stacking, which is just absolutely insane. So after that clip, they mention specific co-op fortune cards, and they mention one which is sharing life. Now this sounds like if you're with somebody, you're able to share life with that person and probably take more damage without going down. Now. This just sounds awesome. It sounds like co-op is now even funner, if that's a word, than it was before, as you're able to utilize teamwork to stay alive through fortune cards, as well as just generally communi communicating 
with each other, and I think this will mean co-op gameplays will now get to much higher rounds than they have before, due to just being able to share life, you can probably, maybe there's one to share guns where you like, give, the oppo give your opponent, give your teammate your gun, so get him out of a tricky situation, and it just sounds like there's so many more possibilities coming to zombies now because of these fortune cards. They also mention team door buys. Now this is splitting the door cost between all the players that you're playing with. Um, however, in the trailer, you can see this team door buy. However, notice that the door actually has five plates and each character is standing in front of a plate. Now, this makes it seem like there's one more plate than there is player. So what if you could actually have five players? Which would explain why they haven't mentioned Willard Wyler at all, and they only mentioned the actor who's playing him. What if Willard Wyler also gets sucked in to the screen, and for five players you can play with five players basically? Like how insane would that be? They're just not showing it because they want you to find out and have the excitement. They wouldn't tell you because it's not something that you should say because Zombies has never been five players before. You had Grief, which was eight max, but you couldn't really work together too much. You couldn't contribute to each other's points. Whereas what if you had five players, five people all on the same side? To me, this is or it's showing. I think it's... It's, it's just such a cool idea to have five people playing zombies instead of just the regular four. And team door buys sort of shows that we may be getting five player co-op zombies. So another thing they mention is the ATM. This is basically a bank where you can go and drop money off and if you die you can go and collect your money later so that you're not completely broke and don't have to rely on getting like pistol kills and stuff if you haven't bought your bleed out guns. However, this does sound a lot like the bank that we got in Black Ops 2. We got it in Die Rise, we got it in Transit, we got it in Buried. We got it in a lot of maps and it carried over to the next game. What I'm interested in is whether the ATM carries over to the next game or if it's just in one game. Okay, so now I'm going to show you another clip which is about the tutorial mode. Special feature about this game is the tutorial mode and you know what? That's perfect. You know why it's perfect? Because some people don't know how to play and they end up getting popped really quickly with a score of like 90 and they don't, they be like, oh, I didn't know how to play. So the tutorial mode, let's, let's. You know. We've done a couple things to make the gameplay uh, more accessible, right? right? The map's a little bit wider, the lanes are a little bigger. You know, not only is it fun, it's, just, it's a theme park and it's just fun, the music's exciting and stuff. Right. The spaces are a little larger, it's a little easier to maneuver around the zombies. Right. But we also have a tutorial mode. Um, and it's a little bit like um, pop-up tips that come by, right? So <laughs> in solo mode, if you go in and play um, and you turn on the, the park, it's like turning on the park tips, getting a guided tour of the park, right? Um, as you walk by different things in, the, in Spaceland, tips will pop up. And it'll kind of just explain to you how to play the game a little more. So we're trying to broaden the audience. You know, Zombies has been a pretty hardcore experience. Um, there's still a lot of depth for the hardcore, tons of Easter eggs and, and, and things for you to unlock in the mode. But we want to also kind of bring more new people in. And I think the theme, the open spaces, and the, you know, the music and the tutorial type mode are all um, things that we've tried to do that will you know, bring new players into the fold. Okay, so in that clip, we learn about the tutorial mode, which is basically a mode with pop-up tips and guides to help the beginner players get through the map, learn all about zombies. And to me, this is a good idea as it helps you understand zombies and now it's much easier to get actually into zombies whereas with Treyarch you had to learn it all through videos and actual people who can who've been playing zombies for a while now this is much more accessible they also set the maps wider for those beginner players so it's aimed at beginner players and what I hope to see is that as the DLCs drop we're going to get maps that become harder and harder and harder so that where the first map's for the beginners, the last map could be for the absolute experts, which I just think would be an absolutely sick, cool, insane idea. Now, at the end of that, they also mentioned Easter eggs. So Easter eggs, they said that there will be big Easter eggs for hardcore zombies community. 
there will be small easter eggs for those beginner players to get that sense of achievement. This map is aimed at everybody with easter eggs, so the I'm guessing that there's going to be absolute loads. They said there's loads, I'm guessing there's going to be more than loads. There's just going to be so many for every single level of player. You've got the hardcore huge easter egg which I'm guessing is going to include David Hasselhoff. And they actually said that he might be escaping the park with you. This means that the easter egg surely, most probably, <laughs> has to be about escaping the park. So you get sucked into the silver screen, you then have to escape the silver screen. Now to me this is sounding like not really a storyline per se, but more of just a really fun but maybe, well, most likely challenging easter egg that they've put into this map. And it looks like it takes the focus off a huge storyline and it's all about the experience of just having some fun. And now with Trey Up we've got a storyline of over four games now which is absolutely insane I love the storyline it's all ending in DLC 4 revelations is gonna be so good however with infinite warfare zombies it sounds a lot like each map is gonna have its own little story and maybe they'll tie into each other in one big way but it doesn't sound like it's so storyline focused if you will it's more about the experience for every single type of player which is what I love about Infinite Warfare Zombies so far. So they also mentioned that the easter eggs can be completed solo. The main easter egg can be completed solo. This is so good for me because I don't have any friends <laughs> um, to play zombies with. Yeah, because none of them like Black Ops 3 unfortunately. It's an absolute shame. But because the easter egg can be completed solo, this implies fun for the solo players that don't have friends just like me. So there's one last thing to talk about before we wrap up, and that is the Astro Arcade. Now, when they talked about this, it sounded so cool. You can play games, you can earn tickets. Now, these tickets then add up to buying guns. They said that you can buy the Forge Freeze once you get enough tickets. You can probably buy other weapons as well. You can probably buy the Face Melter, which just looks... It's currently my favourite gun. It just looks so damn cool. Um... However, the Astro Arcade is not only in the living, they also said that when you die, you get an Afterlife Arcade, which is like the Astro Arcade, it's the same games, except the tickets don't buy you guns or perks or anything like that. What they do is they buy your way back into the game. Now this sounds so cool for Solo, it sounds like a sort of quick revive feature I guess, so that when you down, instead of maybe just going down to a black and white screen then popping back up and running around. What might happen is that you go into the Afterlife Arcade and the only way you can get back in is if you beat enough games to get tickets. Now this also gives you a chance to sort of contemplate yourself if you have enough time to go back in, if you have enough time to do the arcade or if you just want to end it and you know be done with it. What the arcade also does is it gives a break from that shooting, the, the shooting the zombies, the headshots, the blood, and it gives you a chance to just be in an arcade playing fun little mini games. And I think that's gonna give the player a huge break. And what it will do is keep the player actually engaged for a longer amount of time. And usually when you go down, you're like, oh no, what have I done? This is just so bad. What if now going down, isn't seen that way. What if it's now is like, oh, break, finally, I'm actually sort of glad that I went down. Obviously, when you get back in, you probably won't have your guns or your perks, and you have to go to, like, the front of the map to buy down, buy your guns back and everything, get all your perks back and stuff, but when you're in the arcade, it just gives you a break from all that constant action, and to me, this just sounds like such a good idea. But with that, it's the end of the video, so... Please remember to like, subscribe if you enjoyed it. This took me so long to make. Oh, just just getting all the voice clips, recording them and everything, and then syncing it up with all the gameplay, searching for the gameplay in the actual video. The video is 24 minutes long, including the trailer. I have to cut it all up, find the clips, everything, put it all together, find the music, edit it, all together, the rendering so painfully bad because my computer's not that great. However, 
for me, it was fun to do. I got to share what I'm expecting from Infinite Zombies, my ideas. But yes, if you liked it, give it a like. If you want to see more content like this, more updates, more ideas, please subscribe. It would help me out so much. But I've been Diggory. I really hope you enjoyed watching. This is the end of the video. Bye.